I've got a lot of friends that really enjoy their audiobooks, and I've had quite a few friends recently asking about how to properly organize their audiobooks. And I've got a lot of friends that really enjoy their podcasts and really enjoy listening to those on a regular basis. But a lot of them want to get away from some of the big corporations like Amazon and Spotify. And so I've talked to a couple of them about something called Audiobook Shelf. Now, Audiobook Shelf is a really great self hosted audiobook and podcast server. It acts very similarly to something like Plex or Jellyfin, but instead of for movies and TV shows, it's for your audiobooks and your podcasts. Now, I've never personally listened to too many audiobooks or podcasts, but they do come in really handy when I do go on long drives, which, considering where I live now, is relatively often. And so I've leveraged Audiobook Shelf a little bit to help organize those things and make them really easily accessible from multiple devices, including my computers, my e-reader, which is a Kobo, and my phone. So today I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get it set up on Unraid, but we'll talk about the other platforms that it supports as well. We'll talk about a few options on ways that you can go ahead and get your audiobooks from other sources. And then I'm gonna show you how I utilize it, how it gets leveraged, and how easy it can make managing all of your audiobooks or podcasts. Now, Audiobook Shelf does support a variety of platforms. You can do it within Docker, you can do it in Linux, you can do it directly within Windows, which is what I had one of my friends do. So there's quite a few ways you can go ahead and host this, and it just makes things quite a bit easier for yourself when there's so many available options. So as mentioned, we're gonna be doing this in Unraid, so I'm gonna go ahead and install this here. And so we have our audio bookshelf, we have our repository, we're going to leave all these blank. Now this is going to be our audiobook location. And I have already a folder set up for that. So it's going to be in my data, media, audiobooks. And then the config and the metadata, we're going to leave those as is, as well as the UI port. We're just going to go ahead and press apply. All right, so now it is installed. We're gonna go ahead and go to our homepage. And it's gonna be on its own right now and I will go ahead and organize that into one of my folders once again. But we're gonna go ahead and just open up the web UI. Now after setting up your username and password, we're just gonna go ahead and log in with that. And now we can go ahead and add our first library. So we have our media type set as books. We're gonna call this one just audiobooks. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and you can sort your audiobooks into particular categories. You can have kids' audiobooks, my audiobooks, wife's audiobooks. You can do whatever you want with the libraries. Again, it's very similar to the way that you'd set up a Plex or a Jellyfin instance. And now we're gonna go ahead and browse for our folder and select our folder path. And now we're just gonna go ahead and create. And once that's done, we're just gonna go ahead and let it scan. Ideally, it'll find all of our books, so let's see. So our scan is complete, and if we go ahead and we just open up our main page here, we can see that we have a bunch of our books here. So I just put a couple of books from my Tolkien collection, um, as well as some George Orwell stuff. And we have it all, all organized. So this is our audiobooks library. So we have everything organized. If we want to, we can create collections. So if I wanted to, I can create a collection for Lord of the Rings series, for example, stuff like that. We have our authors here, and currently our authors are all blank. Now we can fix this relatively easily by doing what's called a quick match and seeing if it finds our author as it did here. Or if you want to, you can just manually upload an image, but the quick matches work really, really well. So we can do this again here. And it picks up stuff pretty quickly and pretty easily. We can do a match all authors to go ahead and fill in all of the ones that were there. But if there are multiple authors listed, it's not gonna pull them properly. So do keep that one in mind as well. Now, if we want to, we can play them directly within this web interface and we can just go ahead and launch it just like you would, again, a Plex or a Jellyfin file and it'll go ahead and start playing that audio in the background. Now, we can also go ahead and install the app on our phone and connect us to our server here in order to be able to listen to all of our stuff on our phone. Now, here we are in the audio bookshelf app, which I got directly from the Google Play Store. 
And when you first launch it, you're going to know that we have to connect it to our server. So we're just gonna go ahead and click connect. And now we're gonna put in our address here. Now, our my address is gonna be a little bit different because what I did was I went ahead and set up my tunnel that I use to connect everything through Cloudflare so that I can access this from outside of my network. Now, if you wanna see how I do that, it's really, really simple. I do have a video on this. I will leave it down in the description below, but we're gonna go ahead and put in my web page. So we just go ahead and paste that in here and I just press submit. And now I just go ahead and use my login. Now I have access to all of my audiobooks directly on my phone and I can listen to them as much as I want to. I can continue progress. It will save progress between devices now. So if I start listening to it on my computer and then eventually I move over to my mobile device, it will go ahead and synchronize that progress. Now, another really handy thing is that this will also pair things up with actual physical ebook files that you have. So that makes things really nice as well. It'll also give you access to all of the library files directly from in here. So if I want to, I can download them and maybe put them onto my e-reader, which supports audiobooks as well, which is really nice. So we can go ahead and just grab the whole audio file and download it. It also separates it into all of the chapters. So we can see all of the chapters. We can know when they start, when they end. And if we click on a particular chapter, it will go ahead and start the playback at that particular chapter. It is super, super handy. It's grabbing all of this metadata right now as we had set up for our library. We grabbed it from the Google metadata and it works extremely well for that. Now, speaking of e-readers, if you want to, you can set up the email transfer almost all e-readers have some kind of support for downloading ebooks and audiobooks from emails sent to a particular address in order to wirelessly send stuff to your e-readers. I don't personally do this. It's easier for me to just plug it into my computer and move the files over, but Audio Bookshelf does support it. It's relatively easy to set up and you can go ahead and just add multiple e-readers, have this thing set up so that you can just very quickly and easily send over files whenever you want to. As mentioned, Audio Bookshelf also can support regular eBooks and make those really easy to access across multiple devices as well. But if I wanna do that, I would have to go ahead and switch up the way that I have it configured. So if I go down to my Audio Bookshelf, I'm gonna to have to change this location to be without the audiobook specific folder so that it can also see my other folders, which includes my books folder. So if I go ahead and apply this, so what I'm gonna do first here is I'm just gonna go to add library. We're gonna do this one called eBooks. Browse for our folder, we're gonna go to audiobooks and we're gonna do books. Select that folder. Go ahead and create that. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to just grab this. I go back up here. We're gonna add the books one. We're gonna change this one to audiobooks. We're gonna remove the original and we're just gonna go ahead and save that. And then we're gonna let these ones scan. So our audiobooks one should stay the same. If we go ahead now, now that the scan's finished and we go into our eBooks library, I have all of my eBooks here. I can go ahead and again, like I mentioned, I can see my eBook files. I can easily download them from here if I want to which I really do enjoy. This just makes it a lot easier. I don't have to jump into file explorers, especially when away from home. I can just jump into my audio bookshelf. I can download a file. I can download it directly onto my phone and then use my phone to send it over to my e-reader. Or if, like I mentioned before, if I set up the e-reader email system, I can very easily send things over to my e-reader directly through audio bookshelf. This is just a much easier way to organize all my stuff. It doesn't take any extra effort. And now I have much, much easier organization of all my eBooks. I do have quite a few. Uh, if we go to our library here, I have 357 books on my server at the moment. And this just makes it a lot easier to go through all of these, to find them a lot easier, to download them a lot easier. And then if I want to, I can share them with people that I need to and stuff like that. So. I do find this really great for just eBooks as well. And then I have the two libraries separated, uh, which makes things a little bit easier to organize too. Now at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there's a way for you to kind of free yourself from companies like Amazon and maybe download all of your eBooks from Amazon. 
and rip out, rip out. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's also a really good way for you to free yourself from Amazon and the Audible world. If you have a whole bunch of stuff in Audible and you want to be able to listen to it on your own terms, not have to worry about using Amazon services anymore, you can use something like Libation, which will go ahead and pull all of your stuff from Amazon and it will download it all for you. It'll rip out all of the DRM so you don't have to worry about that anymore. And the nice thing about Libation is that it also has a bunch of support for different platforms. So you can do it on Windows, you can do it on Linux and Mac OS. This will help you go ahead and take all of those files for yourself that you paid for and put them on your audiobook shelf and use them on whatever device you want to. And one final thing, if you want to, you can set up something like Radar, which is very similar to the Radar and Sonar, if you know what those are. And you can have it so that it downloads audiobooks instead of just ebooks. However, I do highly suggest that if you do have a Radar instance set up for ebooks, you set up a second separate instance for audiobooks because Radar doesn't do a good job of doing both. So if you want to have one set up for just audiobooks, name it maybe Audio Radar or something like that. Have a second instance, have it set up for just audiobooks, where it'll just do audio profiles for all the authors. And you can go ahead and set it up that way. There are plenty of places to get audiobooks from, both free and paid. So this makes things really easy to manage. And then again, same thing with podcasts. You can grab a lot of those really easily as well. And personally, Audiobook Shelf has just been really, really nice for the rare times that I personally like listening to audiobooks or podcasts. But a couple of the people that I'd mentioned this to, they're really finding it extremely helpful in order to just organize things and keep things kind of up to date. One of them is running it on a small little Raspberry Pi that they have in their house. One of them just runs it right on their main computer and just starts up the server whenever they wanna go ahead and leverage that kind of stuff. I personally have it on my Unraid server so that it's always available, it's always accessible for me, which is really nice as well. So you do get a lot of options here. And I find that it's just a really great way to just help organize all of the audiobooks as well. So with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like subscribed, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, let me know down in the comment section below if there's any other self-hosted apps or things that you would like to do in a self-hosted environment that maybe you don't know exactly how you'd like to do that. Let me know down in the comment section below. I love doing these videos about Unraid. I love doing all the self-hosting stuff. It's been a lot of fun. It's been fun for me to go ahead and explore that stuff and learn about it myself. So let me know down in the comments what you guys would be interested in. Big thanks to my patrons, but big thanks to you for watching the end of this video. If you do want to see any other videos relating to Unraid or any of the self-hosted stuff that I've done, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.